Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I wanted to show you how I created this periwinkle quilt design in my word processor. I'm going to start out with a blank page so we're going to do new and blank. This is in Word 2016 but this should work in any word processor that you have. Then the next thing I'm going to do is click layout and I'm going to change my margins to narrow because I want to get three blocks across and four down so I need a narrow margin to do that. Now I want to insert a box so I'm going to go to insert shapes and then I'm going to choose the rectangle and now I'm going to hold my shift button down and then draw a shape. and that should be square. And now the shape fill, I don't need any fill, so I'm going to shape fill and no fill. My shape outline, I want to be black. And uh, next thing I need is another square. And I'm gonna put this on uh, the side here on the bottom. The shift key, I was hitting the control key. Okay, shape fill and shape outline the same. And I'm going to use this in a minute. I don't need it right at the moment. Next thing I need to do is insert a line. So we're going to, and this line is going to go from corner to corner. And I'm trying to line my crosshairs up with the corner of the box. And then I'm going to change that to black. And then I'm going to draw one more line. So we'll insert shapes and choose the line. And then we're going to go in the opposite direction. Now, when you figure out how to add these uh, blocks, how to create these blocks in your word processor, it's kind of, uh, you have to kind of know how your block is built, what kind of shapes are in it. And some of it may be, um, just a kind of a guess. You might have to try a couple times to figure out how it will work best to get it in your in your word processor. And I'm having just a little bit I'm hitting my little arrow keys to kind of fine tune this a little bit. Okay, we'll try this. Okay, now I need this box. So I'm going to pull this up and it's in the center and that lines up with all of these corners. Now if your box wasn't drawn completely square you may have to readjust the size but you want the corners of your box to bisect these lines that you had drawn here. And what I'm wanting to do now is I need to make that kite shape that goes right here. And so here are the bottom portions of that pie shape or kite shape and now I need to do these two portions up here so those are another line now you could draw uh, triangles but then you'd have extra lines in there that may uh, confuse you when you're working to uh, draw your quilting designs inside the boxes so I want this to go to the center and I can't tell exactly where that center is at the moment but I'm going to guess and now where I, when I need to find out exactly where it is is to click this line up here and this dot will show me where the center is and it looks like I hit it as close as I'm going to get I think that's pretty good so we're going to just let that go there and I need one more line so I'm going to insert shape, click the line again and I'm going to go from that point to this point and click off to the side to see how close I've got and I want those lines to both be black so I'm going to change them. Okay next thing I want to do is to group these two lines together so I'm going to select them both and do that by hitting the control key select one and then select the other and we're on drawing, the drawing tools, and we're going to hit group. Give that a second to respond here. And then click group. 
Now those are grouped together. Now I want to copy those. So you could either right click and click copy or you can go back to your home button and click copy and paste. And I'm going to move this over and I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to move it into position the best I can. And then use my arrow keys to kind of fine tune it into place. Now I'm going to copy it again or paste it again. Move it and rotate. And then move that into position. Use arrow keys to fine tune it and then paste one more time. Move it and rotate. And then move it into position. Okay, so here we go. Now, uh, next thing I want to do is I want to make copies of this block, but there's a lot of pieces in here now. We have the outer square, we have one diagonal line, the second diagonal line. Uh, I don't know, don't need this box anymore, so I'm going to delete that. And then we have four of these triangles here. So I'm going to group all of those together. And I think I'm going to just pull this out just a little touch more. So I can line those up just a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So first thing I want to do is I want to click the outside and hit my control key. I want to click each diagonal line and then each pair of these triangular lines here. And that selects everything in the in the box here. Okay, I'm going to click format again. Group And then now we should all be in one piece. It shall be one piece that I can move around. Okay, so now I need to resize this. So I'm going to hit my shift button and shrink it down to size. And then I'm going to go to home, copy, and paste, and then move that piece where I want it to go. It's going to go right next to the previous one. And use my arrows to fine tune it and then click paste again. And then move this into place. Okay, so now I have a row. Now I want to group these all together. So hit shift and select each piece. Drawing tools format group and group. Go back to home, copy, paste, and then move that one into position. Paste again, and then move this one and paste one more time. Okay, now I want to group all of these together. So shift and then select each row. Drawing tools format, group, and group. And now I have one, one section. And now I can print this out and I can uh, use a pencil and practice different quilting designs on this and uh, see what kind of designs I like. Now when I make this I will make a page with just the main block and I will use that a lot of times to try out different designs but when I want to see what they look like combined together in the quilt then I need this this type of a layout. I need at least I need at least um, nine blocks put together but I prefer to have 12. 
and that gives me a much better idea of how that quilting design is going to look in the pattern. So that is how I use my word processor to create a paper pattern of my quilts and my quilt blocks. So I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my newest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.